Hey y'all. In a previous video, we made this long sword and a number of you commented that by turning the handle on the lathe and making it perfectly round, it doesn't give you any blade alignment. Now this makes for a very comfortable handle and I like turning uh, on the lathe. I enjoy the process. I enjoy uh, the detail that you can get, but it's a, it's a valid comment. Can we turn the handle on the lathe and still end up with an oval handle that's aligned with the blade? We can. That's what we're going to do this time. We're going to make another long sword, turn the handle on the lathe, but this one's going to end up being oval and aligned with the blade. So, let's get to it. For the handle and the pommel, I'm just using some simple oak flooring and needed to cut it down and glue it back together into the sizes that I needed. I'm trying to get the grain alignment so that it will, uh, when glued back together, try to look like one piece. It won't perfectly, but... So the handle, once I put it on the lathe, I started turning it down round to shape it, but it was very important that you leave the ends square, that you leave the ends alone. That's really important for making this work. We're going to see why later, but once I had turned this down round, then I could come back in and add some of the details that I wanted. And I'm just marking them from some drawings, but you can also freeform this obviously. This handle, this, um, this grip is roughly based on the, on Aragorn's ranger sword from Lord of the Rings. Um, definitely one of my favorite swords in its design. I, the overall sword didn't end up being completely uh, aligned, but at least the, the handle is fairly close. So again, once I can turn down and sand it, but get in some of the details that I want from the turning process, then I can pull this off the lathe, and here's where we're going to take it and make it an oval. And this is why it was really important to leave those ends square. This kind of cut, if you would make this kind of cut on just the cylindrical shape, that's very dangerous. Don't do, don't ever do that. But by taking this with the ends that uh, are still squared, I can safely cut the center out of this and thus create more of that oval shape. It's really a, a simple way to do it. So now the blade, I went back, I also used some oak. I found a piece that had some interesting uh, differentiation in the light and dark wood. And it was a little bent, but you can, you can reshape these as you go, just bending them out. So making the, you know, size, again, this, this is, you could freeform this. I'm generally making it according to the length of this board that I have. And it's nice to have a, a planter hanging around for you to create the, some arcs. Now, before cutting the actual shape of the blade out, uh, while it's still um, rectangular, I'm going to cut the center groove and do that so that I can cut it straight down the board. So this is just testing to be sure that that groove is going to work out okay and then I can cut the groove in using some marks on the router table and on the blade blank so that they are the same on each side. Just using a small cove bit, I think. I 
cut that groove out of the center. Then we can go over and cut the actual shape out on the bandsaw. Cutting this out on the bandsaw, I cut pretty close to the edge. You could cut just outside of the edge and then come back with a sander and clean it up, but I, I go ahead and cut right up to the edge. I still do need to clean it up a little bit, so for me, a hand plane, um, just a few cuts with the hand plane, and I can knock down any high ridges, and it's uh, ready to go. Now final, finally on this blade, I went in and put a chamfer on each, uh, each side. It doesn't create, I'm not trying to create a, an actual edge, but it just creates the illusion of one. Now back to the handle. So. We need to cut a center channel out of the handle for the tang of the blade to fit in, which means that I need this to be right down the center. And I actually got it wrong the first time. So once I pulled this, uh, once I done <laughs> the first one, I saw that it was a little wrong. You can see that they're, they're a little bit off. So I had to go back and I was almost at this point just going to turn a new handle, but instead this was easier. I just cut a piece to fit in, glued it in, and then went back to the saw and flush cut it. So we'll try that again. This time I was a lot more careful in uh, before committing to cut the whole ch the whole channel out. But once I had it really close down the center, then I could just take chamfer it out, turn it around, chamfer it on the other side for just that tiny, tiny bit of difference. And again, this is where the ends, keeping those ends squared. So the handle's in the center, but now that the, we have the chamfer cut out, we have the center cut out so it's oval, let me take this and cut it, cut the actual handle out. This first cut is pretty straightforward, fairly safe. This next cut, a um, little tricky, and actually I, I would have preferred to make the handle a little bit longer, but just to keep my fingers away, uh, I cut a little bit, uh, not quite as close to the edge as I might have. So now, same thing with the pommel. Let's cut the center channel out on the pommel before we shape it. And I'm not cutting all the way through on the pommel because it just needs to glue in through the end. Making sure that's going to fit and we'll glue that back together. And once that glue is set, then use a little scrap piece of wood to help with the turning. So mark my centers. And then chuck it up. Now the pommel is not going to be cut into an oval. There's no need for that. So. This is just turned into the final shape uh, right here. So 
So the pommel of the handle and the blade are all ready for the cross guard. Um, initially, I'm just getting it ready. And again, while it's still in a block form, cutting out that initial channel, the tang, the blade will go through. And once that was cut out, then I could come back in and uh, spray glue or just draw on a shape. I'm making sure that it's going to fit to the handle and then just going back and reshaping. I wasn't entirely... I went and did some freeform shaping on this and I didn't entirely love the way that it came out. I think I got a little carried away in some of the details instead of keeping it a little bit simpler. But so be it. So cutting the rough shape out that I thought we would use, cutting that out on the bandsaw and then taking it to the sander to give it the final shape. Now here's where I wasn't sure what I wanted and that's where I went wrong. I mean, you don't know exactly what you want to end up with and I just started freeform shaping and creating sort of these knobs along the way. Yeah, it's fine. Now I had to go in and cut the uh, taper because I taper, I prefer to taper the blade to the tang. It gives a little bit of a stronger connection between the tang and the blade as opposed to if it were just a straight off. Um, so cutting that taper in so that things will fit together nicely. There's still a little bit of a taper that will extend into the handle. So to make this fit all together, I just need to cut that into the handle itself. But this will help create a really strong connection all the way through the cross guard, the handle, the cross guard, and So that's fitting together really nicely. And one more thing I thought we'd try is adding a bit of detail to that cross guard. So using the cross guard itself to create one side of this shape and then creating an arc on the other. And cut out the rough shape. Now this will create a small piece, but I wanted to add a chamfer on it, again just a nice detail, but it's way too small to try and manage um, at the router table. So just a spot of super glue and then accelerant to dry it real quick and with this uh, stick, this bar added to it, now I can go back in and safely chamfer that. But you would never want to do that on such a small piece freehand. It'd be horribly unsafe. And then it pops right off. A little sanding, and it fits perfect. So, time to glue everything together. and some small hand clamps can hold things in place. The tang doesn't extend all the way through the handle. I put another tang in the pommel and that extends through for a few inches. And the, 
cutting the handle this way, creating it this way, does leave a bit of a ridge. Well, but you can obviously easily just sand that out. So for final, I stained part of the handle with a darker stain, and then the rest of the, of the sword just got an oil finish. So it was a fun experiment. I hadn't tried making handles this way before. I thought it worked really well. I'm gonna play around with that some more. Thanks for watching.